The fourth run of the 2014 IndyCar Series season took place at the greatest racing venue in the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But for the very first time, the IndyCars wouldn't run on the oval. Instead, they would run on a slightly different version of the track list used by F1 in 2007. Announced on October 1st, 2013, this change came about in an interesting attempt to increase attendance for non-race day events during the month of May. This wasn't the most off-the-wall idea, as from 2005 to 2007, the Indy Pro Series, what is now Indy NXT, ran the Liberty Challenge, a shadow race of the US Grand Prix. The race was ran four times, with Marco Andretti winning the inaugural running in 2005, and Bobby Wilson winning the final running of the event in 2007. A little under seven years later, Indy style racing would return to the road course. Qualifying was affected heavily by rain, and filled with drama. While Ryan Hunter raced at the fastest time in qualifying, a crash later on in the Fast 6 session brought out a red flag, deleting his best time. Sebastian Saavedra would take a shock pole position the first and only time he would start from the pole in his IndyCar career. Joining him on the front row would be rookie Jack Hawksworth, another upset performance. The rest of your top 10 would consist of Ryan Hunter Ray, Simon Pagino, Will Power, Scott Dixon, Sebastian Bourdais, Juan Pablo Montoya, Tony Kanan, and birthday boy Elio Cachaneves. Mikhail Eloshin would be your last place starter. For the first time since the 2008 Long Beach Grand Prix, standing starts would be in effect at an IndyCar race. The first of four times standing starts would be used during the 2014 IndyCar season. With all the cars lined up, the red lights flickering off, and history about to be written, we can get to one of the most iconic starts in the history of IndyCar. Sebastian Saavedra wouldn't get off the line, first getting hit by Carlos Munoz, and later Mikhail Eloshin. It capped off a weekend that perfectly resembled Saavedra's IndyCar career, promising at points, but ultimately fruitless. Juan Pablo Montoya would also stall farther behind, and with the track showered in debris, the full course yellow would come out. Munoz, Eloshin, and Saavedra would of course all be out of the the race, while Juan Pablo Montoya would still be in the race, albeit at the back of the pack. Other drivers like Takuma Sato and Mike Conway escaped with damage, with Sato needing a new front wing, and Mike Conway going back to the garage with severely broken suspension. While the chaos ensued at the start, Ryan Hunter Ray somehow avoided the stalled car ahead of him, and would take the lead before the yellow came out. After the extensive cleanup was completed, we'd get the race restarted on lap 8, and only one lap after the restart, Jack Hawksworth would take the lead with a bold move going into turn 1. After some more field shuffling, things would finally settle into a groove, with the top three being Hawksworth, Pagano, and RHR. A driver making big moves early on was Juan Pablo Montoya, who after restarting at the back of the pack, had hit the afterburner to break into the top ten. A little while after this, a flurry of pit stops began. Ryan Hunter Ray and Justin Wilson would lead some laps at two and one apiece, before they too shuffled into the pits, giving the lead back to Jack Hawksworth. As we pass a halfway mark, the biggest battle on track was between Will Power and Scott Dixon. This battle, however, would end in disaster, as going into turn 3 on lap 42, Dixon went for a very uncharacteristic bonehead move, spinning as a result and beaching himself in the gravel trap. The yellow would soon come out, with another round of pit stops coming with it. This would prove to be a bad thing for Jack Hawksworth, who shot down to 9th as a result. For the lap 48 restart, it was Ryan Hunter Ray in the lead, James Hinchcliffe in second, and Justin Wilson in third. The restart was hectic, as Hinchcliffe dropped back, other cars shuffled around, and an incident happened farther towards the back. Frank Montagny, in his first IndyCar start since Sonoma in 2009, was minding his own business. Meanwhile, Britt Martin Plowman was behind, carrying way too much speed. He would do a half spin, hitting the inside curb of turn 7 backwards, mounting Frank Montagny in the process and taking off the Frenchman's rear wing. Frank Frank Montagny would be out of the race, while Plowman would somehow be able to continue on. On the ensuing restart, a stack up coming to green would take Graham Rahal out of the race thanks to a punt from Juan Pablo Montoya, while up at the front, Justin Wilson would grab the lead. Another round of pit stops came from this yellow, with Elio Castroneves and Charlie Kimball staying out and taking the first two spots. The front runners who pitted would be relegated far down the pack, with Wilson down in seventh. James Hinchcliffe was part of the group farther down the order, and on the restart, this would come back to haunt him. After contact ahead sent debris flying, Hinch would be hit on the head. The incident left him unconscious at some point, with Hinch's car coming to a rest in the runoff area of turn 7. Hinchcliffe would be concussed from the incident, but despite his car being stopped on track, it wouldn't bring the yellow out. In the final 20 laps, it was a race of fuel saving to see who would take the checkered flag. 
Ryan Hunter Ray and Oriol Servia had pretty hard numbers to hit, while Elio Kashinevez in the lead had to pit no matter what. With 13 laps to go, Elio had to pull in, with him now being on the back foot. Bourdais and Briscoe were running right behind, and also had to pit. Oriol Servia would then take the lead, but his fuel number slowly became harder to hit. Soon enough, the number 16 Ray Hall team basically gave up on fuel saving, driving like a bad ass hell but hoping for a yellow. Simon Pagano, meanwhile, was in it for the long haul, trying desperately to make it on gas. Coming to four to go, Servio would file into the pit lane, taking him out of contention. It was now a three-horse race with Pagano and RHR in first and second running on fumes, and Elio in third on full attack, less than five seconds behind Pagano. You could put a blanket over the three of them on the final lap, but it was too little too late. Simon Pagano running on a hope and a prayer would cross the line first to win the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis, taking his third career win and his first of the 2014 IndyCar season. This race was honestly pretty decent, probably the best dry race on this track. It featured some interesting strategy and some decent racing, and while the broadcast was a bit awkward at times, it was still a decent race to watch. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.